Today, the sermon is entitled, The Heavenly Helper. I, was in, I just got back from Sabah. I went to visit my daughter, my daughter Angel. She's in uh, Kota Kinabalu, so went there to spend a few days with her. Yeah, and uh, of course, no matter where you go, no matter you are, whether you are on holiday or not, no matter when you are rich or you are feeling poor, you must continue to spend time with God. And I did just that, even though I was on holiday, but I still spent time with God. And that's the attitude of a real Christian who can say amen. amen. Well, I don't spend time with God because I just got married. Wrong. Well, I don't spend time with God. I'm too busy with my work. Wrong. I don't spend time with God because I just gave birth. Wrong. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how, our, we have to maintain our relationship with Jesus. Who can say amen? amen? So going back to the point I'm trying to make, I was in Sabah and I still spend time with God. Not trying to brag here, I get nothing from bragging, I don't no interest in bragging. My point is we must never slide away from feeding and growing in our relationship with our God. Amen? amen. And because I was faithful, all glory to God, I spent time with God, God gave me this message that I'm preaching today. And I didn't spend time with God so that I can get a message to preach to you. I spend time with God because I'm smart. Smart people will spend time with God. Who can say amen? When we spend time with God, who benefit you? Who can say hallelujah? You know, but of course, there's many things flow from that. Many other things flow from our time with God. The sermon flowed from my time with God. And the Lord reminded me this whole week when I was in Sabah, Kota Kinabalu, the Lord said, he was teaching me and reminding me over and over again that the helper, the helper that we need, the real helper in our lives is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, not your, your best friend or your, your wife, your husband, the helper. This is all in the Bible. The, your helper is the Holy Spirit. But we always turn to this person for help to that person for help, to this person for help. But as believers of God, the first person we turn to for help is the Holy Ghost. And who can say amen? amen? And if you forget everything that you might hear today, you cannot afford to forget that. Get that into your brain. Get that into your heart. That the helper is not your befriender. The helper is not your discipler. The means the ultimate is the Holy Spirit Running to your pastor Running to your boss Who's very rich Running to every Run to your knees Run into the throne of grace Who can say amen, amen. And if the Holy Spirit After you run to God And, and, and if, if, if The Holy Spirit tells you Now you run to your befriender Or now Then it's okay, obey But the first person we run to Is the helper So I was blessed by this message that the Spirit of God gave me while I was in Kota Kinabalu. I said, oh, I must preach this sermon. I cannot be stingy in what God tells me and keep it to myself. And that's why I'm preaching this sermon entitled The Heavenly Helper. And I'm going to present to you Acts chapter 1. And as always, Acts, the chapter that you receive on Sunday is not just for today, Sunday, but it is for the whole week. And thank God you came. Thank God you came to this church. You will receive this sermon from God. Who can say hallelujah? Thank God you are watching on Facebook Live. Thank God. Thank God you are in the satellite church there. Praise the Lord. You, are, you did well. Hallelujah for this. This message is going to bless you. So before we turn to Acts chapter 1, let's just turn to another verse. Before we do Acts 1, let's turn to John 14, verses 16 to 18. And get excited when we turn to the Holy Bible because it is God's Word. Don't get so immune to the point, oh, I'm turning to the Bible, it's like no big deal. It's big deal. Turning to the Bible is big deal. That's why I love turning to the Bible. My favorite book in the whole wide world is the Bible. And for those who don't know, do you know what is the best 
best-selling book ever in the whole human history. The, the best and the most printed book ever. Not Sidney Sheldon, not this author, that, or not even Annie Blyton who's really famous. The most printed book in the history of humanity that is printed over and over again. You know what? The Holy Bible. Who can say hallelujah? That is facts. That is a fact. And God is so good. So people are receiving revelations. The, the fact that Bibles are being printed is a sign that people are receiving the word. So don't get left out. Don't get left out. If people are enjoying the word of God. People are enjoying the voice of God. You are busy with the newspaper. You are busy with COVID-19. You are busy with that magazine. You are busy with all kinds of things. Don't get left behind. Everybody, pe people are enjoying the word. Okay, and when you allow the, yourself to absorb the word, not just you are blessed, your family, your people, your friends around you will also experience the blessing that is being flown into your life. Who can say amen? amen. So you have family members, right? You have family, you have friends whom you love. Okay, they are not in the Lord yet. They are not reading the word, but you do it. Because you will shine when the, the child of God, the Christian is like a sunshine. You know, the sunshine doesn't, sh the sun in the sky doesn't shine for himself. The sun in the sky shines for others. And you, we, as children of God, we will supernaturally shine into the lives of the people around us. Who can say hallelujah? Your colleagues will look at you and say, you are different. Your family will feel, she is different. Your friends will say, wow, he is amazing. All because you became that sunshine in the name of Jesus Christ. So grow in the word. So now turn to John chapter 14. And I pray in Jesus' name, you'll have an excited heart. Not, oh, I'm turning to the Bible again. That attitude must go. Okay, turn to the voice of God. Turn to, we have a lot of Bibles there. Okay, and Marianne make the uh, uh, card there say, take me home. I wonder if anybody took him home. The Bible is waiting to be taken home. The Bible is waiting for adopted fathers and adopted mothers. Take the Bible home and use it, of course. It's free of charge. No need to pay. Take the Bible. We have some more in the storeroom. Okay, somebody has blessed us. Take the Bible home and make sure you don't collect dust. Jangan masukkan habo. Make sure you take and you read. Who can say amen? amen? Take the Bibles home. How, sometimes you go to church nowadays, you seldom see people holding the Bible. I, I mean, I have nothing against those who don't use the physical Bible, but I love the physical Bible. Alright? Wherever I go in my bag, there will be a physical Bible. You can have the Bible in your handphone, fine, but nothing like the physical Bible. Be traditional. Some tradition is good. In fact, today's sermon, we're going to talk talk about some Christian traditions which I love and I'm going to uh, share with you. Let's turn to John chapter 14 verses, verses 16 to 18 and listen to this powerful verse. And I will pray to the Father. Jesus says, I will pray. Everybody say, Jesus is praying. Jesus is praying. Do you know that? Do you know that? When you become a Christian, the moment you become a Christian, Jesus begins to pray for you. Jesus wants to pray for everybody, but those who reject him, then they cannot, Jesus cannot pray. Jesus will pray for those who say, Jesus, I want you. Jesus, I need you to pray for me. And Jesus is praying for you and I. Jesus is, his mission on this earth is finished. It is finished. But his mission in general is not finished. Jesus is up in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, who can say amen, amen. and he's doing amazing things. His mission on earth is done, but his mission on heaven is not done. He's praying. He's waiting. He's going to come back. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Everybody say another. another. This is a very good word for, for those of you who have friends that tell you the Trinity is not the word of God. You see, there is, if you, this is just one of the many verses that reminds us that Jesus didn't say, oh, tell the Father and I will send you me. Jesus was the first helper. I'm going to go, but I'm going to pray to Papa to send you another. Everybody say another. So Jesus, Jesus is not senile and saying, I'm going to send you myself. Another. Who is the other? The Holy Spirit. So the one who's on this earth is not Jesus, it is the same God. It's a mystery. How many gods we have? 
Everybody say one. You better know that there's one God. But how many persons? Three. That's why we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who can say amen? amen. Not three gods. How many gods? One. But how many persons? Three. That's why you say Trinity. I'm going to send to you another helper. One more different person. Same God, but different person. But people kind of, a lot of Christians understand the Father. A lot of Christians understand the Son. Oh, the, fa the, fa the Father is the one who sent the Son. And then the Son is the one who died on the cross. But a lot of people don't understand the third one, the Holy Spirit, another helper. He is the one here. Do you know when Jesus died? Listen, when Jesus died, who is the one who brought Jesus back to... This is in the Bible. Who brought Jesus back to life on East, the first Easter Sunday? Who? The Holy Spirit. That's in the Bible. When you get, when you get born again and you get baptized in the Spirit, who enters inside of you? The Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, I gotta go. I gotta go so that the other one, the third person will come. So we as Christians, we need to know the Holy Spirit. We need to be besties, BFF, with the Holy Spirit. We need to talk to our, the Holy Spirit every day. The Holy Spirit, I don't know how to do that. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, show me how to do it. I'm so sad or I'm so scared. I'm so fearful. I'm so worried about my daughter. Holy Spirit, please do something to my heart in Jesus' name. And He will do. Holy Spirit is not a bird. Holy Spirit is not a dove. Holy Spirit is God who can say amen. It's the same God, the powerful God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Father is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Holy Spirit is also the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same God. Say, wow. In other words, God is living inside of you. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you have repented of your sins and you ask for the Holy Spirit, God come and stay inside of you and that's why you can be changed nowhere can anyone be changed without the Holy Spirit you try to stop taking drugs you try to stop smoking you try to stop having sex with people without the Holy Spirit you will not succeed the Holy Spirit is the powerful one everybody say powerful he is well I'm trying to I'm trying to stop telling lies Oh, I'm trying to stop watching porn. Quit trying. Stop trying. Start asking the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask and you will. Are you asking? Whom are you asking? Are you asking yourself? Or are you asking the Holy Spirit? Start asking Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, help me in my business. Holy Spirit, help me to be a good mother, how to bring up my children. Help me, Holy Spirit. I can't stop doing that bad thing. Holy Spirit, I cannot. In Jesus' name, please help me. He is your helper. Wow. I mean, I knew this truth a long time ago, but I'm not sure why. God reminded me again this week when I was in Kota Kinabalu. Turn to the Holy Spirit. Turn to the Holy Spirit. He is your capital H helper. And He will give you another helper. And He may abide. Abide means tinggal di dalam. Stay. Abide with you forever. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is full of truth. Sometimes when you believe in lies, all of us have some lies in our heads because we learn from our friends, we learn from TV, we learn from our grandmother, all kinds of tipu hela in our head. The Holy Spirit said, no, don't believe that. That's not truth. That's a that story. That's not truth. That's a lie. And then the Holy Spirit will give you, will show you in the Bible 
will confirm with you whatever the Holy Spirit says is always in alignment with the Holy Bible. Who can say Amen? That's why it's important when you listen to a preacher. What makes a preacher good? And I've said this many times and I'm going to say this over again. What makes a preacher, a person who preaches, what makes him or her good is when he preached from the Bible. That's all. Are you listening? Not someone who's good looking or someone who is charismatic, but someone who preached from the Bible. Who cares about what authority you have? Some people have human authority. They are called this, they are called that in the church. But they do not preach from the Bible. You don't listen from them. Because the Holy Spirit will never say amen to anything that's not from the Holy Bible. We can only say amen to anything that has been spoken and confirmed in the Holy Bible. Who can say amen? amen? And that is why we also need to know the Holy Bible. We need to read. We need to come to church. Verse 17, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit cannot lie, eh? cannot lie, impossible, whom the world cannot receive. World means people who do not accept Jesus. That means whenever you see uh, a word, the word world in this kind of context, it means the people who do not believe in Jesus. The world cannot receive. So you don't believe in Jesus? No way. You can have the Holy Spirit because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world doesn't know him, doesn't see him. But you know him, for he dwells, tingal, with you, and you will be, and will be in you. Verse 18, I will leave you, I will not leave you as, just, Jesus says, I will not leave you as often, I'm going, I have to go to heaven, my mission on this earth, but I will leave you somebody. I will come to see, I will come to you. So Jesus comes to us in His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus' Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Father's Spirit. So we have been, brothers and sisters, we have been, we are still in the 40 days of Lent season. Are you, are you aware that you are in the Lent season? One or two of you are falling asleep. I hope you are closing your eyes. I hope you are closing your eyes and listening to the sermon and not falling asleep. If you're trying to be awake, if you are falling asleep, if you have a friend beside you falling asleep, help them, wake them up. Okay, wake them up. That's the enemy trying to stop you from hearing the truth. Yeah. So we are in still the season of Lent and the closure. We are in the closure, the finale of the season of Lent. And the finale... The closure of the season of Lent is, begins with Palm Sunday. Everybody say Palm Sunday. You see all the palms. So it's like first day of Lent all the way to 40 days of Lent. It's called the Lenten season. Before we enter into the Easter season. The Lenten season is a morning. You fast. You, you try not, you, you remember uh, people who are suffering. You remember how Jesus suffered. The Lenten season, the 40 days, is not a joyful season. It's like you begin to fast, you make sacrifices. That's the 40 days of Lenten season, which is ending. Today marks the beginning of the end. It's not ended yet. But the Palm Sunday is the day when we are saying the Lenten season is going to be over. And then it will, we will enter into a new season. It's called the Easter season. And Easter season begins with Easter Sunday. Easter season is a few days stretch. It begins with Easter Sunday. And the Lent season ends with the Saturday, on that Saturday before Easter. Are you listening? Yes. Then Easter, we are supposed to be joyful. Easter, we celebrate because Jesus is brought back to life. Who can say amen? amen. But Lentons, a lot of traditional Christians, and that's, I think that's good in that they, they try their best to, you know, not to be so loud. They go, don't go on holidays. They say, this is time I need to be, you know, on my knees. I need to do some fasting. It's good to do fasting throughout the year. Who can say amen? amen. It's good to be on your knees throughout the year, but you can't even do during the Lenten season. Don't talk about throughout the year. Isn't it? Isn't it? So like, so if you, I mean, for those of us who are spending time with God and fasting and praying and turning to the word throughout the year, hallelujah, press on. But for those who have not started, maybe the Lenten season is a good time to do it. 
you know, so at least that 40 days in a year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After the Palm Sunday, which is, which is after this, we will celebrate Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday is that we remember the time Jesus had the Last Supper. Monday Thursday is spelled as M-A-U-N-D-Y. So those who, who went to theology school or you come from a traditional background, you'll know all this. So that's why a lot of, some churches don't, don't, sell, don't observe Monday Thursday. So that's why they have the Last Supper on the next day, which is Good Friday. So Thursday, today is, is the beginning of the end of, of Lent, which is Palm Sunday. And on Thursday will be Monday Thursday. And on Friday will be Good Friday. And we are having a service here on Friday at 8 p.m. And we will celebrate the Last Supper, the Thursday, Monday Thursday, Last Supper, on Good Friday itself. We don't have a service on Monday Thursday, but we're going to have a service on Good Friday. And we will also celebrate the Last Supper, which is actually supposed to be done on Monday Thursday. Are you, are you following? Yeah. The Last Supper that Jesus had before he died on Good Friday. Are you following so far? Yeah. So all this is biblical, the sequence, the chronological order. And finally, the Holy, Holy Week. The Holy Week will end. Today is... Palm Sunday is the beginning of the Holy Week. Are you following? Yes. The Holy Week is the end of land. Get it? You're not confusing, right? So I think as Christians, it's good to know this kind of the information. So today is the beginning of the Holy Week. Okay, the Holy Week is from Palm Sunday and all the way to Easter Sunday. Okay? How many of you are looking forward to this Friday's, uh, Good Friday service? Leave your hands up. Are you coming? This Friday, Good Friday. How many of you are looking forward to Easter Sunday next week? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? Put in your schedule, prioritize church. Prioritize the house of God. Okay, for those in satellite church as well. Alright? Let's turn to today's and this week's chapter. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. The former account I made. Can anyone tell me who wrote the book of Acts? Can anyone tell me who wrote the book of Acts? <laughs> I thought, I, for a long time I also thought it's Paul. Actually, it's not Paul. It's Luke. Okay, the one who wrote, who wrote the book of Acts is Dr. Luke. And a lot of people think it's Paul, but if you... <laughs> Yeah, he's a doctor, that's right. He's a doctor, Dr. Luke. And he's not one of the 12 for your information. Okay, he's not one of the 12. He came in later. So Dr. Luke wrote the book of Acts. But of course, the character of Paul is also in the book of Acts and everything. But the one who wrote it, it, the book of Acts is Dr. Luke. He eventually became a believer, of course, and a disciple of Jesus Christ. So let's, let's, let's look at this verses. The former account I made... O Theophilus. Theophilus is a, is a believer. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. So Jesus was taken up. We call that the day of ascension. After he threw the Holy Spirit, everybody say Holy Spirit. Okay. After Jesus was taken up, how does God speak to us? Through the Holy Spirit. Get it? Are you following? Jesus has gone. Jesus, there's no more Jesus on this earth. Jesus died. And then Easter Sunday, he came alive. And then ascension, he went up, ascended into heaven. So where? There's no God. No. After Jesus, how do we hear from God? Through the Holy Spirit. So the same God is present. He is speaking to us. When you turn to the Bible, remember to allow the Holy Spirit to interpret for you. Don't just turn to the Bible without remembering that the Holy Spirit is as God as Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not a lesser God. Jesus has gone, but the Holy Spirit is here. Are you listening? Yeah. But we forget that. We all know Jesus, Jesus. Of course, we worship Jesus. We love Jesus. The same God. But we forget someone as powerful as Jesus, the third person, is as present as how Jesus was more than 2,000 years ago. Like when you are in your room alone, you think you are alone. If you're a child of God, you are in your room alone. You're never alone. The Spirit of Jesus is there. And don't be scared. 
when you are bathing in your bathroom all naked and all that because God will never leave you nor forsake you who can say amen eh? when you are in your room on that internet you think you're alone you think you're alone you can go wherever you like you can do whatever you like on the internet you are never alone we forget that that's why we act like as though we are alone God is with you and God is not there to punish you God there is there to love you to help you to comfort you and who can say amen some people say I wish Jesus is here you have Jesus bro in the person of the Holy Spirit when your boss called you you come out of the office and I'm alone but my boss is alone. you're never alone turn to the Holy Spirit please comfort me I just got scolding cow cow you're not alone your Holy Spirit is there the Holy Spirit is the same God as Jesus when your spouse called you you feel angry you feel lonely you feel tired you feel sick I wish Jesus here bro Jesus is here what are you talking about Amen? Amen. Jesus is here. How? In the person of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I heard Christians say, wow, the, the apostles are so lucky. They can walk and talk and sleep with Jesus. I wish I was one of the twelve. What are you talking about? In fact, do you know that Jesus was not able to go inside the twelve apostles? Jesus can just walk beside them, and but the Holy Spirit is closer to us than how Jesus was with the disciples. Listen to this. Listen, don't get distracted. Why are you getting distracted? It's the enemy. Okay? The Holy Spirit is today closer to us than how Jesus was with the disciples. Jesus cannot go inside Paul or Peter or Andrew. You know what I'm saying? Jesus can walk with them, but the Holy Spirit is not beside us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. We are so intimate with the Holy Spirit. Who can say Amen. amen. So never ever feel alone. Never ever feel alone. When you are alone, you are never alone. When you understand this truth, oh, I'm a widow. I got no husband. You have a one billion times better husband than your husband. Oh, my daughter is in there. Oh, my son is there. I feel so sad. I, I, I tell you, compared to your daughter and your son and the Holy Spirit, you are comparing like rubbish and gold. Who can say amen? amen? Do know the value of the Holy Spirit. He's exactly, he's a replica of Jesus. Just as Jesus is a replica of the Father. You see Jesus, you want to know how the Father's character, you see Jesus' character. You want to know how the Holy Spirit's character, you read about Jesus. Who can say amen? You know how sweet Jesus is? You know how gentle Jesus is? You know how powerful Jesus is? You know Jesus can walk on water? Who can say amen? You know Jesus can bring the dead back to life? Who can say amen? amen. The Holy Spirit can too. Who can say hallelujah? We forget. We don't know. We don't want to believe. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your very best friend. And when you pick, speak in tongues, What am I doing? I'm surrendering my voice for, to the Holy I'm not praying, it's my voice. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to pray using my voice. That's in the Bible, and who can say amen? Do you know that? The Bible says when you pray in tongues, this one is surrendered to the Holy Spirit. You don't, I, don't, I don't think, like speak in English, I'm thinking what, what I'm supposed to use. When I pray in the Spirit, I'm not thinking what, what I'm supposed to use. And this is biblical. For those of you who are not praying in the Spirit yet, you sangat rugi. Sangat, sangat rugi. Because I, you, when you pray on your own, in comparison to when you allow the Spirit of God to pray through you, the Spirit of God prays perfect prayers. Who can say amen? amen. Your prayers in English, you can be your eloquent, bombastic English, is still imperfect. 
We'll have some flaws in our Tamil, in our English, in our Basa. You know what I'm saying? But when you pray in the Spirit, you are praying perfect prayers. Hallelujah. And the enemy doesn't want you to pray in the Spirit. The devil, Satan, the ugly, disgusting Satan, doesn't want you to pray in tongues. Because he doesn't want you to enjoy having perfect prayers coming out of your, your, your life through the Holy Spirit there. Pray in the Spirit. Every true born-again Christian can pray in the Spirit. Don't tell anyone, don't let anyone stop you from believing that truth. Every born-again Christian can. You don't have to climb Mount Everest or Mount Kota Kinabalu, then, oh, I, I must climb the mountain, then I can pick in the Holy Spirit. No. Every true Christian can pray in the Holy Spirit. Who can say amen? It's the, fact, it's the matter of whether you want or you don't want. If I shut my mouth, can I pray in English? If I shut my mouth, I insist on shutting my mouth. Can I pray in Bahasa? Cannot. Same thing, you've got to open that mouth to pray in the Spirit. So I want to pray in the Spirit, but mm, 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 you will never, until you die, you will never pray in the Spirit. Open that mouth. Surrender that tongue to the Holy Spirit. Who can say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we continue reading. Verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, Jesus was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit has given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. So who starts giving commandments? Who starts doing things? Who starts leading? It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus has gone. Goodbye, Jesus. I love you. It's your spirit. But the one who is the God of this era is the Holy Spirit. Same God, different person. We are not belittling Jesus with this kind of sermon. We are preaching truth. Who can say amen? amen. When you speak to the Holy Spirit, you at least, I mean, mysteriously, you are speaking to the Father and Jesus at the same time because they are one God. Don't crack your head. Oh, Jesus will be jealous. Huh? There's no jealousy in Jesus. Who can say amen? amen? The Holy Spirit's job is to always glorify whom? Glorify whom? Jesus. So there's no, oh, the three person, you jealous of me. I, we are like that. Kita manusia begitu. Cemburu, cemburu. We are like that, but God is not like that. He has perfect love for one another. The three persons has perfect love. You speak to the Father, you are just also speaking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They are one God who can say amen. But three different persons, not the same persons. Get to know the third person. Please get to know the third person. He is the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we call him the Holy Ghost. And today I'm introducing to you his, new, his name, the Helper. It's in the Bible. He's called the helper. The help. What's the job of the helper? To help you. What's the job of the helper? To help you. Our heavenly helper. Verse 3. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during the 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they're always teaching us about the kingdom of God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right? That's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like going quickly with these verses, but I need you to all go slowly with these verses this week. Because I only have a few minutes every Sunday. I can't be like digging deeper into the verses, then I wouldn't have time to say anything else. But your job, you have the whole week until you come next Sunday, you get your new church. It's your job is to go slow in your reading and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you throughout the chapter Sunday after Sunday that you receive in, the, in this church. Let's go to verses, verses 4 to 5. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait. Everybody say wait. Everybody say wait. Okay, this verse speaks about, Jesus says, until, until you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you wait. This tells us the importance of having the Holy Spirit. Follow please. But to wait for the promise of the Father. What did the Father promise? What is the biggest promise that the Father gives us? The Holy Spirit. Which He said, you have heard from me. Verse 5. 
for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the, everybody say, Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. So as New Testament Christians, there are two kinds of baptism. Everybody say two baptisms. Yes, but some Christians only believe in one baptism, the water baptism. The truth is the second baptism, if you understand the Holy Bible, the second baptism is more important than the first one. Is the first baptism important? Yes. But the second one is more important. People so gung-ho, I want to water baptize. Please get water baptized. It is biblical to get water baptized, to immerse in water. Not throw some water on your head. That's not in the Bible. In the Bible, we always follow the Bible. Who can say amen? amen. The Bible, even Jesus himself, went in the water, submerged in water. Submerged, like the same word, submarine. Submerged, not throw water. That's, that's not in the Bible. Submerged, we always follow the Bible. You get submerged in water. That's water baptism. But you don't stop there. You also need to be baptized in the Spirit. I'm going to give you like a, a breakdown here on the difference between water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. Alright? Pay attention. Water baptism is a personal free will decision. Okay, that means not your mother baptized you. Your mother sent you to baptize. That's not personal. Personal means you yourself says, I want to be baptized. If you have been, if someone, when you were a baby, someone sent you for baptized, that is baby baptism is different. Okay, you as an adult, as, as an adolescent, whatever, you can think for yourself, I want to be baptized. You make your own decision. Listen, the first one, a personal free will. Free will means nobody forced you. Nobody forced you. Baptism cannot take place by force. If somebody forced a person to baptize, that baptism is not legit. Are you listening? Come on, are you listening? Yeah. That means it's a free will, personal decision a believer makes to cut a covenant. What's a covenant? When Pastor Amanda and I got married, we cut a covenant. A covenant is like a contract in, made in heaven. It's godly. It cannot be broken. Yeah? I mean, can, a, can a, you baptize a baby? Can a baby, can a baby cut a covenant? Cannot. Can a, when you baptize a baby, can the baby cut a covenant? Can or cannot? Cannot. So it's, it doesn't count. The baby has been baptized, praise the Lord, hallelujah, but that baby didn't, didn't cut a covenant. Okay, if, I, if Pastor Amanda is a baby and I got married to her, she cannot make a decision, but we are two adults who made a decision. We cut a covenant as husband and wife, and covenant cannot be broken. So baptism, water baptism functions as a covenant. For those of you who have not been married in church, you married legally, and all, but you're, you need to get married in church. Listen, you need to get married in church. You need to cut, because covenant can only be cut in the presence of Jesus Christ. You go to the ROM there, you cannot, that's, that's not covenant, that's a, that's a legal marriage. Every Christian couple who's living together need to be married in church. Are you listening? Yeah. Come on, are you listening? Yeah. And every Christian who can make decision should be baptized in water. Are you listening? Yeah. For those of you who have not been baptized, it's time for you to get baptized. Speak to Pastor Amanda, speak to Elder Cheryl. They will show you what to do. Okay? Go to them. That's the first. Secondly, a public baptism. Water, now we're talking about water baptism. Huh? Water baptism is a public declaration of the believer's faith in Jesus Christ. So you must have, you cannot baptize, you need to have one or two witness. There must be other people there present. Okay, when you get married, secret, 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 get married, that means, you know, something is wrong. If I get married to Pastor Amanda, shh, don't tell people we got married, shh, something is wrong, maybe I got another wife. Right? Marriage should not be a secret, so baptism should not also be a secret. Next one would be an outward demonstration, listen, huh? this is important, an outward demonstration of the inward transformation that takes place when the believer receives Jesus Christ. That means you are showing outside what has happened inside. 
that inside in my heart, I give my life to Jesus. I'm baptized to show outside what has happened inside. Now let's talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please pay attention. The first point here is, it's an empowering experience. Everybody say empowering. empowering. You receive power. When you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are powerless. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you become powerful. Secondly, the second point in regards to Holy Spirit baptism is equipping the believer. You, you are equipped to become witness of Jesus and to serve God in ministry. Are you listening? So you are baptized in the Spirit, not just to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is just a way of like God is showing us, yes, the Spirit is in you and to build yourself up. You are baptized in the Spirit so that you can serve God. Who can say amen? amen. Don't get baptized in the Spirit, become powerful and shock sendiri. Okay, you have to serve God when you, are get, you get that power. And, and the last one, last point, growing in the spiritual gift. There are a lot of spiritual gift that the Bible speaks about. Prophecy, interpretation, healing. If you are not filled with the Spirit, you cannot enjoy this spiritual gift that God wants to give us that we can use for the body of Christ. Who can say Amen? So please, allow the Spirit of God to lead you into getting baptized in water if you have not done that yet. And then secondly, especially get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the next verses. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, you, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? These people speaking to Jesus now. Okay? Verse 7, And Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in his own authority. Verse 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So there is no Holy Spirit, no power. No power, no way you can do ministry. There are a lot of Christians. I'm not being judgmental, but there are Christians who are doing ministry without the Holy Spirit. When you do ministry without the Holy Spirit, you will either dry up or blow up. Serious. What is dry up? Dry up means slowly you will die. Oh, I, cannot, I cannot anymore. You will dry up. You will akam mati. You will dry up. You, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You cannot serve in ministry. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You are serving in ministry with your own flesh. You will dry up. What's blow up? Blow up is means you, you serve in ministry with your own talent, your own strength. Then your kepala jadi besar. I'm so great. Please worship me, look at me. I'm such an amazing reverend. Are you listening? So you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will either dry up or blow up. And that's not how it's supposed to be. In the Holy Spirit, we don't dry up, we don't blow up. What happens? We grow up. Who can say amen? amen. We grow up, grow up, grow up in the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read one more before we close. I can sense the spirit of distraction today. The enemy hates people to receive this message. But it's okay. Many of you are receiving this. Who can say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Many of you are receiving this truth. Hallelujah. I'm going to read the last part of uh, this, this, this chapter. Please study the whole chapter. Please study the whole of Acts chapter 1. Okay, please, because of time, I'm going to just read the last bit. Acts chapter 1, verses 21 to 26. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John. See, always go back to the water baptism. So, for those who say water baptism is not important, no, you don't know, that's not biblical. Water baptism is important. And then followed by Holy Spirit baptism. Okay, I read verse 22 again. Beginning from the baptism of John, 
baptism of John always speaks of the water baptism, okay? To that day when he was taken up from us, Jesus ascended into heaven. That's what it means. One of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So now, Judas already died. In this, the context of this passage, Judas betrayed Jesus and Judas died. So now they are looking for a replacement. I like this one point is that for those of us who think that oh we cannot be replaced we are so important in the church we are so important in the body of christ if we choose to be fools if we take god's ministry for granted we choose to do the wrong things like judas did we will be replaced are you listening yeah. and and god doesn't care if you are a reverend or a pastor or a deacon or an elder or even your english is the, the best english god will replace you god doesn't want to replace us god loves us who can say amen, amen. but if we insist to be proud and we think that we are irreplaceable or well, if i leave the church the church worship team is going to die you think so god will replace you this is what we learn from here never be proud Come to the ministry of God, stay humble. If I don't do the sound system there, nah, the judge will die. No, God will replace you. Who can say amen? If I don't teach, the children in the church will die. No, no, no. If, I don't, if Reverend Edmund is not here, the church is going to... No, God will replace someone better than Reverend Edmund. Who can say amen? amen? God does replace people with the leading of the Holy Spirit. When people choose to be like Judas, to go against God's will. Stay faithful. Tell your friend beside you. Stay faithful to Jesus. Come on, say. Stay faithful to Jesus. Stay faithful. Don't ever think you are in irreplaceable. I must never think I'm irreplaceable. So buzzing you. Alright? So this one, and, and this was done with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Judas was replaced. And Matthias came in. All done by God himself. Okay, let's look at this. Verse 23. And they proposed to Joseph called Barabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed to say, God, which one now? Show us. You need to tell us which one that you want to replace Judas with. You, O Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show which of these two you have chosen. So take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression or sin fell that he might go to his own place. Verse 26, and they cast after praying and trusting God, not simply trust, not simply cast lots. After praying, after turning to God. Okay, this is where it talks about you, God works supernatural, natural. The casting of the lot is a natural part, but what's behind it is a supernatural act of God. Verse 26, and they cast their lots and the lot, the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven. So he became the new number twelve apostles. 